Hello and welcome back. This is part 5 of the Seiko 5 disassembly and today I'm working on the motion works which is basically everything that uh, makes the hands spin. So starting with the barrel which contains the mainspring we'll have the train of wheels which ends up at the escape wheel then the pallet fork and then the balance and that all needs to come off. The watchmakers that I follow always start by taking the balance off because it is the most delicate part of the whole watch. The hairspring literally is that um, and for those of you who are not familiar um, uh, a hairspring is the tiniest thinnest little piece of steel you will ever come across and it literally is it's thinner than a hair and very very delicate but surprisingly strong but it won't take any abuse so first thing to do is to get that off and safe and it's held on on this movement by one screw the next size screwdriver who is Mr. Red because there's quite a bit of tension on that. There we are. And then my little green friend So, what I'm going to do is very gently, well, hold the movement holder down. There's one screw, but it also sits on two posts there. So I'm just going to gently lever it off the posts. There we are. And then lift out the balance. I've only had one cup of coffee today. No, it's not off that post. Come on, there you go. There we are. Very gently lift it out. Okay. So that is the balance wheel and the balance wheel bridge. And what I'm going to do is to turn it over. Mic at uh, my retro watches suggested this okay and that is actually sat in its uh, actually in the bearing which is good and it's uh, see if we can zoom in on that a bit more Ooh, no, that's horrible. <laughs> Let's not do that. Okay, well, one of the next, um, one of the next um, episodes when I got this all stripped out is to look at all, examine all the parts under the microscope, and we will see this in more detail. Now, the interesting thing about this balance is it's not. Um, hasn't got all the little screws around the side. I'm sure, I can't remember what the names are. You might not be able to see that. Let me just see if I can shuffle this around so you can see the hairspring better. Oh, clumsy pillock. Let's do that again. Oh, there we go. Right. you might just be able to see the hairspring. We'll do this under the microscope. From where I'm looking, the hairspring looks to be in good condition. It looks even. It doesn't look kinked. And, um, yeah, it looks all right, actually. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to put that in the... Um, 
ice cube tray. And I'm going to get a little pot for that on its own and just put it on a dot of Rodico. What, a, what, we, what we've got, what I've got is, let's just zoom out this. Use what you have to get what you want. Basically, I've got this one of these little hotel portion pack um, jam pots. And oh, there we go. Well, there's a, a motto. Eat well, love life. I can't argue with that. What I'm going to do is to put a little bit of Rodico Universal Watchmakers Green and Goo. Like blue tack, but um, green. Put that on there. Ah, hang on a second. Hang on. There we go. Let's put that finger cut back on. Fingers are clean today. Um, I haven't been outside yet. Right, so we've got that. And what I'm going to do now on this particular movement, got that, there we are. There is an anti-shock system proprietary to Seiko called the Dire Shock. Now I'm just, just going to push that gently into the Rodico. There we go. So it's stuck. And the Dire Shock system, he researched is a little bit like the Inca block system. There we go, that's safe. Um, and it is a shock absorber for the um, uh, balance staff. And the balance staff is the pivot that goes up and down the middle um, and what it spins around. And um, I can't think who patented it originally, the Inca block system. Um, somebody will tell me. Uh, but the Seiko Dire Shock system is pretty similar, and we'll look at that later. Right, so the next bit, let's just zoom in again, get back up to three times magnification so you get a good view. The next bit is the, <coughs> excuse me, the train wheel bridge and that's this basically any plate that contains pivots for gears is a bridge and um, so this is the train wheel bridge what you may be able to see down there is the pallet fork and the pallet fork is well you'll see it in a minute um, is the little bit that rocks backwards and forwards that regulates out or permits the um, mainspring to unwind and it knocks the balance backwards and forwards which makes it spin so I'm going to take that off now now I have checked previously I think it was episode one or two to make sure that there is no power left in the mainspring and I'll tell you what I will do actually I will just gently yeah there's no power there what I did was just very very gently just move the back of the pallet fork across as though it were doing its thing to see whether it snapped to one side and the other and if it did that it would suggest that there is power in the mainspring which there isn't I know that but it's always worth checking now I'm going to use tweezers on that because that's quite hidden So, pot number nine. 
these two screws uh, you'll be able to see it in a minute these two screws um, hold the pallet fork bridge down but you may be able to see that they let's see if we can get that better in view um, the post that they go on to is shouldered so that it the pallet fork bridge um, sits on the shoulder and then the screw holds that down All right, so very carefully yeah. yeah carefully he said chasing the damn thing around gotcha don't gotcha Right, so that's the pallet fork bridge. And no signs of wear. There's a tiny little jewel in that. Uh, you can just see that. See the little hole there in the middle? Just there. He said with his great chunky finger. So, so that's that one. And then the pallet fork itself, which is probably the second most delicate part in the watch. No, 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 there was a bit of power in the mainspring. Would you look at that? Even though it wouldn't spin. There we go. Where are we? We're there. Now, the reason that I keep getting things off-centre is on my phone, the uh, camera is not central. So there is the pallet fork. Let's just put that on something white. Uh, which I haven't got. Well, I'll tell you what. I have a coaster. Just move the movement out of the way. Move the rodico out of the way. Pick the pallet fork up. Pop it on there. And there you have it. Let's just zoom in. It'll get a bit spotty because it's a digital zoom. No, it's not going to focus. Zoom out a little bit, try and focus again. Yeah, it's not. Okay, so another one under the microscope. And this has two tiny little jewels. Let's try it on a black background. There you go. Two tiny little jewels and a very, very delicate pivot. And on the right hand side you can see I think what they call the impulse lever and that just knocks the balance backwards and forwards Oops, there we go right so you can go in there so that's that dealt with right so now we know that the mainspring is completely unwound because it just did it in front of our very eyes because um, the pallet fork, as I said, regulates, just rocks backwards and forwards against the escape wheel and um, lets the mainspring wind down slowly. So now we're taking the train bridge off, which is the bridge that holds the train of wheels. Oh, that's a long screw. Let's get the rodic out. Are you ready to come out? Yes, you are. Well, that's quite, that's quite a long one. Right, I'm going to put that in a different pot. I'm going to put the train wheel bridge and all that lot in there because what I don't want it doing is damaging the pallet fork. And so, one, two, three screws. Oops, my movement's moving. That's not a good thing. Definitely going to get a new clamp. Movement holder. Oh, yes, don't forget your little screw. Where are you come from? Ah, that was. So it's just off camera. The second bridge screw. I'd forgotten about that. 
that could have been bad. There we go. Right. Now you know when it's completely unscrewed, because if you keep rotating, the end of the screw thread goes on the screw, goes click against the end of the thread in the body. So if you hear it click, then you know it is completely unscrewed. Where are we? Now one of the my raison d'etre doing this. Gosh, that was loose. That is completely loose. Is that trying to fit a complete disassembly, cleaning and service into 20 or 40 minutes of video with a lot of editing. Yeah, dropped it. You miss a lot of discussion and examination and um, a lot of detail. So the three screws on the train wheel bridge are off. I'm just trying to lever that up gently. Appears to be loose. And what I want to do is to give it to you as it happens. as though you were doing it, or you were sat next to me. Is that going underneath there? No, oh, it is. Right, okay. One more screw to take out, which is on top of the barrel. And that is the, the gear that um, the automatic wind, the automatic winder gear is there. That acts on that one, but that is on top of the uh, train bridge. Now what I'm going to have to do is just manually hold the barrel assembly just to take this one off. And it's a left hand threaded screw. Remember, right tighty lefty loosey. Goes into pot number ten. That gear should now come off. Which it does. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's got a square hole in it to engage with the barrel assembly. And that tends to suggest it's really quite high torque. That can go in again at pot number ten. So ah right now then what we have here is the click. Now you see this straight piece of metal, that is the click spring and that is what you hear. When you wind a watch up you hear it clicking and that's what you're hearing and that is held on by one screw which is here. Again, which is not very tight. I don't know what's happened to this watch in the past. I believe it was, well, not serviced once, um, but it has been. I th think it went for a strap replacement, and I think the watchmaker who had it stripped it down so that's the that's the click spring okay so that's nice and easy right now can we take the train wheel bridge off yes we can one of the things with this oh now there can you just see that the engraving on that plate sort of um up and down and left and right um, pattern. Sometimes the patterns on bridges and things is absolutely gorgeous. Right, so 
any ooh that's interesting so this is the underside of the train wheel bridge and you can see I'll just get a pointer you can see there's quite a bit of muck there that's where's that that's underneath the barrel or sorry up above where the barrel is there's quite a bit of muck there so it's quite a bit of oil or grease um, that has been applied and has gone all over and theoretically all the wear that came from the this can go into pot number 11 on its own all the wear that came off the um, automatic winder plate you know how it had been worn down to um, brass um, is going to be in this area so this is the train of wheels and there seems to be an intermediate plate in there so we have the, the fourth wheel okay so that's the second hand so we can go into pot number 11 uh, fourth wheel uh, third one I think I've got this back to front I'm not so good I'm not so good on the naming of everything you don't need to know the names of everything just where they go that's an interesting one that's got a, a gear on the middle so we'll put that that way up and then we have another intermediate plate but I think I'm going to take can I take the barrel out at this point no I can't right so this intermediate plate has to come off and just checking the orientation screw hole is opposite the center wheel and then we have three holes in a line, roughly. Oh, yeah, that's never been off. That was factory tight. Don't know whether you heard the click as I just took the tension off it. There we go. And behind door number three... Well, we have, this is sat on a couple of posts, so what I'm very mindful of not doing is levering it up unevenly and distorting or bending the pivots of the wheels that it is supporting. And we have a centre wheel. And I can see the escape wheel here. Whether you can see that, here we are. Here's the escape wheel. And if I can just lift you out carefully. Now, the escape wheel, compare the escape wheel gear teeth, which is what I'm holding in my tweezers, to the center wheel and the barrel. Um, the escape wheel gear teeth interact with the pallet fork and obviously the pallet fork is quite rocked backwards and forwards there we go right that's you off so that is that way up and there is uh, a bit of a scoop out on the back so we know which side which way up that goes that's good Right, we should be able to take the barrel out now, which we can. And the barrel contains the mainspring. And you can see it's obviously had some grease or oil on it. And it is perhaps a bit too much. It appears to be either some scratching or some writing on there. Engraving. Maybe it's a service mark. Let's just clean it off a little bit with Rodico. No, 
if it's well if there is we'll see it when we come to uh, clean it okay so inside there is a tightly wound piece of spring steel literally spring steel right and then we are left with the center wheel which is the one that has the cannon pinion on the other side so the time has come to remove the cannon pinion and it's a little bit safer to do now because the um, second wheel is out or the second wheel and what I'm going to do is just to grip it underneath the top and God, that's been welded on. Hmm. That got it. That's got it. Well, that's a very much a push fit. I don't know whether you can see. Let me just deal with that. That's the cannon pinion off whether you can see this is the shaft of the last remaining gear and there's a little knobble on the top of that um, which is what engages with the cannon pinion so you should be able to just lift that out now also um, was that lever there, which was on the uh, keyless works, and I think that's a push fit shaft. Right, let's just gently lift out this last gear, it should come out without any, there we go, undue aggravation, and that is allowing for the two um, face screws, the this little odd lever, which probably will come out, but to be honest, I'm going to leave it. It's not coming out willingly, so experience of other things says if it doesn't want to come out, it doesn't need to, just leave it be. So there we go. That is... The Seiko 5 6119C completely stripped down and nice and safe in the ice cube tray. Oh, plus the balance. So, um, time to tape over all of that. The next job is to. Um, have a look at these parts under the microscope, see what is worn, what isn't, uh, any other damage, and um, take it from there. So, uh, this has been a long one, but you know, it's thank you for watching. Um, so, I am really enjoying this, and um, I hope you are too. Uh, any comments or suggestions, please be polite. Um, and uh, we will pick it up next time when we examine and see what we have. Thank you very much indeed for watching.